Hello everyone. Today in geomorphology we learn the concept of isostasy. We know that there are various relief features on the earth and these different relief features like our mountains, plains, plateaus are standing on the surface of the earth due to a certain balance between the definite principles. Otherwise it cannot be maintained in the present state. Here comes the concept of isostasy. Isostasy is the mechanical stability between the upstanding parts and the low-lying basins on a rotating earth. The word isostasy has derived from the German word isostasios which means in equipos or in equal position. This concept was proposed by American geologist Dutton in the year 1859. He wanted to explain the state of balance that exists between the mountain ranges, plateaus and continental lowlands. According to Dutton, the upstanding parts of the earth must be compensated by a lighter rock material from below so that the crustal relief can maintain the mechanical stability. Let's look into what was the basic of this concept of isostasy. Pierre Bogan, during his expedition to the Antis mountain range in the year 1735, found that the gravitational attraction of Andes mountain is smaller than the mass of the mountain. Similarly, during the geodetic survey of the Himalayan mountain ranges, it was also revealed that the Himalayas were not exerting the attraction according to its enormous mass. The following explanations were given for this anomaly. One is the Himalayas are generally hollow and are composed of bubbles and not rocks and hence the gravitational attraction will also be low. It was criticized because if it was hollow then the mountain range cannot stand on the surface of the earth. The second reason given was that if the mountains are not hollow, then the mountains above on the surface of the earth must be compensated with the deficiency of mass from below. Thus, the total weight will be low and hence the attractional force will also be low. It was also opinioned that in the interior of the earth, there is such a level below which there is no change in the density of rocks. The density will change and vary above this level only. All the columns or any land masses at this level will have an equal mass. It was therefore suggested that bigger the column, lesser the density and smaller the column, the greater will be the density. Here. In the concept of isostasy, two major concepts were more famous. One is the concept of George Airy and the other one was the concept of Pratt. Let's look into the concept of Airy. According to Airy, the inner part of the mountains cannot be hollow. The excess weight of the mountains are balanced by lighter materials from below. Airy states that the crust of relatively lighter material is floating in the substratum of denser material. Simply you can tell that Cl is floating over Sima. Thus, the Himalayas are floating in the denser glassy magma. Airy stated that the maximum part of the Himalayas are sunk in the denser magma like a boat that floats in the water in which maximum proportion is under the water during its floating. This leads to the concept of flotation. We can explain the principle of flotation with the help of an iceberg. For every one part of the iceberg that floats above the water level, the nine parts of the berg remains below the level of water. Similarly, for every one part of the crust that lie above the substratum, nine parts of the crust must be in the substratum. Thus, the law of flotation explains the ratio of 1 is to 9. If we apply this principle in Aries concept, then it should be assumed that 
the himalayas with a maximum height of 8848 meter has a deeper root below the substratum approximately 9 times than that of 8848 meter thus according to airy himalayas have lower attractional force because there exists a longer route of lighter material in the substratum this balances the material above airy postulated that if the land column or the body above the substratum is larger greater part will be submerged in the substratum similarly smaller the land column smaller part will be submerged in the substratum thus the density of different columns in the land remains same it does not change with varying height or depth this explains uniform density with varying thickness so even though the surface of the earth have different relief features with varying height or thickness the density will always remain same let's look into what is the major criticism against this concept if we accept the theory then every upstanding part of the earth have a greater depth below as per the airy's law of flotation of 1 is to 9 then the himalayas with a height of 8848 meter should have a depth of 9 times than what we are seeing above the surface of the earth at this much depth we all know that all the things will be in a molten stage as temperature increases with decreasing the depth so it was highly criticized now let's look into what is the concept of pratt pratt's concept as another major one with regarding to the isostasy while studying the difference of the gravitational deflection between kalyana and kalyanpur pratt calculated the gravitational force of himalaya with an average density of 2.75 he studied the density of various rocks of himalayas and the nearby neighboring plains and found that the density of each higher part is less than the next lower part that means the density of mountain is comparatively less than that of the density of the plateaus the density of plateaus lesser than that of the plains the density of plains lesser than that of the ocean floor and so on thus the pratt concept of isostasy states that there is an inverse relationship between the height of the relief and density that means bigger the column lesser will be the density and smaller the column greater will be the density according to pratt there is a line of compensation or a level of compensation above this level there is variation in density and below the level there is no change in the density the density will not change within a column it only will change from one column to other column above the line of compensation so pratt's concept states that uniform density with varying thickness uniform depth with varying density we can take this with an example consider that there are two columns a and b having equal surface area but they have different height below the line of compensation there will be having only equal mass hence the density of column b will be comparatively greater than that of column a so that its weight will be equal at the line of compensation thus there exist an inverse relationship between height and density as per pratt's concept i hope you enjoyed today's session and understood the difference between the concept of pratt and airy for any doubts or queries please post in the comment box or in the google classroom i wish everyone a great day ahead thank you